Defense USA, the greatest entertainers in America, is requested by you, the fighting men of the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command performance presented this week and every week till it's over, over there. Okay, man, it's chow time here on Command Performance, so line up for that international mess of entertainment. Cook to order to fill the orders that you guys write to Command Performance, care of Special Service Division, Los Angeles, USA. And speaking of cooking, we're cooking with high octane again tonight, serving America's top music, sweetened with a bit of that stuff called glamour and throwing in a few eggs laid by your favorite comedians. And coming out now to work over a hot mic, a man who's worked all day over a hot orchestra, your commanding officer of this command performance, Professor K. Kaiser. <laughs> well, thank you, Ken Carpenter, and evening, folks. How are y'all? Well, we sure... Professor, I have completed writing a new poem, and I am resigned to reading, same. It's good, Bill. Well, can't you see we're just starting the show? Now beat it. Thank you. I will read, same. <laughs> a poem about soldiers, entitled Soldiers. Very clever. <laughs> oh, I wish I was a soldier, because then I would be able to sit around the bunkhouse and pin up Betty Grable. <laughs> oh, get out of here. Now, well, fellas, as I was going to say... Your international clam bake is really kicking up the dust tonight. Yes, sir, we've got so many stars, we've got stars getting autographs from the stars. So let's start the proceedings. First, for Tony Leodini on New Guinea, for Pill Pusher Pete and Carl Wolf chasing land crabs at 915, Clarence Kaplan at 871, the way at 462, Corporal Chuli Wu at 948, and for good old King Cole sitting over there on Malta, he has Uncle Sammy's number one ditty of the hour with Harry, Diane, Julie, Jack, and Max. Here we go. Let's get lost. Get lost. Let them send out alarms. And though they think us rather rude, mm -hmm. let's tell the world we're in that crazy mood. Let's defraud. Get crossed right off everybody's lips to celebrate this night. We found each other. Oh, let's get lost. Thank you, kids. Well, gang, you ask command performance who the newest comedy team is back home, and our spies report that it's Alan Carney and Wally Brown ringing the bell for RKO in Adventures of a Rookie. 
Well, they've come here direct from work and dressed in moving picture GI to do a bit from their new flicker. The scene, a big room at the induction center. A couple hundred rookies are taking their army aptitude test. Uh, and right up in the front row, having a tough time copying off each other's papers, Wally Brown and Alan Carney. <laughs> Five-minute break. Go out for a smoke and report back the same seat for your final test. Hey, get a match? Yeah, sure. Oh, swell. I want to... Hey, how did you do? How do you do? No, I mean, how did you do in your IQ test? Oh, pretty good up until that uh, question about A and B driving to Chicago. That's where I got stuck. That was the first question. Yeah, I know. That's where I got stuck. <laughs> That's where you got stuck. I didn't understand it. Didn't, huh? It's very simple. Look, A and B are driving to Chicago. Now, that's clear, isn't it? No. Right away I get stuck. Where'd they get the gasoline to drive to Chicago? <laughs> what difference does that make? What difference? How could they drive to Chicago without any gasoline? Oh. They had gas. A had a B book, B had a B book, B had an A book. They both had an uncle who died and left him a C book. Gee. <laughs> I don't even have an uncle. That's fine. Look, let's get back to the problem. A and B are driving to Chicago. A starts an hour ahead of B. Why? Well, he had the... He thought that the... What do you mean, why? Why should he start an hour ahead of B? We got a war going on. We got rationing. Why didn't they drive together? Look at all the tires and gasoline they were saved. They couldn't ride together. They didn't know one another. They'd never met. And I'm beginning to be sorry I ever met you. You don't like me, huh? Of course I like you. Now, let me explain the problem. A and B are driving to Chicago. They got their Uncle Seabook. Right. Now, you're a very nice fellow and I like you. And your mother likes you, doesn't she? Oh, she's crazy about me. Sure, she's just crazy. Now, look. <laughs> a and B. A and B are driving... You were just assuming that you are A. You leave an hour ahead of B. I am a what? You're a... <laughs> what do you mean, what? Well, I gotta be a something, like a truck driver or a soldier or a, you know... You're a nothing. Mm. <laughs> you don't like me again, huh? I like you. I think you're wonderful. Look, there really isn't any A. You are you. Well, you just said I was A. <laughs> you are A. You're also you. See? Oh. <laughs> now do you get it? No. <laughs> Look! <laughs> a and B are driving to Chicago is 300 miles. A starts an hour ahead of B... B catches them in three hours. A's average speed is 20 miles an hour. Now, what is B's? B's? Yeah. Uh, that's easy. Sure. <laughs> B's are little bugs with honey in them. Uh, <laughs> come on, get out of here. 